Hi everyone, it's Yuki, and welcome to my survival series. I've been thinking for a while to start this, so to make it a bit more interesting, I'm gonna be adding a few more rules. The first rule is gonna be the armor challenge. With this challenge, I'm only gonna be allowed to craft the type of armor that I already found in the world. Obviously, this is gonna be except netherite since we can't find that, but anything before that, I'm gonna have to find it first before I can actually craft it. The second rule is to be eco-friendly. I'm gonna try to focus on sustainable living, so I'm gonna try to only use renewable materials as much as I can. Obviously not everything is gonna be possible, but I'm gonna try my best. Then I'm gonna set myself some bonus objectives. So I want to keep an adventure journal where I'm gonna record like all the coordinates and everything that happens through the game and so on, so we can actually look back into it. And then I'm going to want to stay connected to everything that I built. So this means that I'm going to have to make a path. If it crosses a river, I'm going to have to make a bridge and basically keep all the buildings connected to everything that I'm building. Just to make it clear, I'm playing on hard with cheats off. I wanted to play hardcore, but I actually want to enjoy the world. So in case I die, I'm not going to lose anything. So I'm just going to be able to reset. All right, let's jump into it and I hope you guys enjoy it. Okay, so hopefully we're going to get a good spawn. I'm going to be doing a totally random world. So we'll see how that uh, turns out. Then we'll find a good spot to build in. So it looks like we're in a taiga. That's the spot that I spawned in. There's a big cave here. I want to mark this spot here, right? So I know that this is the spot I spawned in. And then later on to try to make some kind of uh, like a, a nice spawning area. So let's build this a bit higher. All right. So like I said, I want to keep a journal. So my main goal this episode is to try to get a book and quilt. So we can have the book and then write everything down. All right, make a crafting table. Then we'll make a pickaxe. Get some stone from the cave. Okay, so we can now craft the pickaxe. Let's mine a bit more stone just so we can get some tools going. So I know I'm gonna I said that we're going to be eco-friendly, but just at the start I'm probably gonna have to mine some stone, I'm gonna have to mine a few things. Make a sword as well. How do you guys position your tools on the hotbar when you play? Well this goes on the other side of the mountain. Oh, we have some berries. So that's going to give us some food early on before I actually manage to do anything. Oh, there's a good few of them even. And, uh, yeah, let's see. So I should be technically finding some chickens around here to find a book and to make a book and quill. And then I'll need to find the river to get some squid. But oh, there's some pumpkins around. Oh, is this a village? It is a village. Okay. I'm gonna get some of these. I'm going to take some of the pumpkins just to get some seeds. And then let's see if I can find anything in these houses. Okay, so we found our first piece of armor that we can craft, which is the iron pants. There is a zombie. Okay, I can take the, the helmet and the chest plate. There's That's the most luckiest spawn I've ever encountered in Minecraft. We then got a bit more loot from the chest in the village. 
and went out swimming in the river to get some squid. After getting the ink, we went out into the forest. We found some sugar cane and then went out by boat to find the next few things. Found the shipwreck with some good loot. Got our first diamond. Found another chest with a buried treasure map. On the way to the buried treasure, we managed to find some cows and get some leather. So now the only thing that I need are the chickens. Okay, so we know it's here. And in case you didn't know, there's a trick where you can find a treasure by looking at the chunk you're in. So basically, we are looking to be in a 9-9 in the chunk. So technically, the treasure would be right underneath here. And there it is. Not too much. There is a heart of the sea, which would be a really good thing to have. Potion of water breathing. And the secret is to always break the chest. In case you find uh, another map, then it's not going to point you back here. Is that another shipwreck? I think it is. Oh, there's feathers. Okay, let's uh, let's craft this book and quill. Oh, I need a book, right? Oh, I can't craft a book because I don't have paper. There we go. And now we do this. It's the other way around, isn't it? Okay, so feather, book, ink. Book and quill. There we go. Okay, so what I want to track is uh, date of start it's today 30th of july 2023 rules we have the armor challenge we have eco-friendly and then we have the objectives keep a journal which we did Maybe adventure journal. Stay connected. Difficulty hard. Cheats off. Oh, this is one of those. That's a ruin. Okay, we got the monster hunter. Anything good in here? Oh yeah, maybe I should add this in our journal, right? So we have... Armor. We have iron. We have helmet. Pants. Chest. Leather. Chest. Let's explore this shipwreck. Well, we have some leather boots. Add them to the journal. Leather. Boots. Oh, is that the ruined portal? Oh, I can see some tall mountains out there. Okay, I like this area already. Let's see if there's anything here that I can find. There's a chest here. So there's a, a gold chest plate. There's a village close by. Let's go to shore and sleep quick before anything else happens. Let's go and explore the village. Oh, well, that is a really nice house. I want to go back to those mountains where we came from. 
yeah, those mountains look like such a cool place. And like that uh, overlook there, I really, really like this. Oh, this is like a, a mix of a small swamp. <laughs> Let's explore the, the mountain, see what's around it. Maybe try to go all the way up. Okay, that's a, a really cool area to look over. And that is a big drop. This looks like a volcano. Ooh, we could transform this in like a volcano kind of type. Okay, do I want to jump all the way down there is the question. Can I make the jump? Oh, definitely. Okay, let's let's set up near this lake kind of thing here. I will put down my bed. Set my spawn. In case I die, now we are here. Gonna put down my crafting bench. And we all know that once you have the bed and the crafting bench, that's home. And dump absolutely everything in there. The plan for today's episode is to build a small farm, get some animals, and finally build a starter house. Before we go any further, I want to address that last time I said that a bed and a crafting bench make a home, but after a couple of comments, I was actually wrong. These three things actually make a home. So you need a furnace to actually have the complete home here. So yeah, we got that sorted now. So hopefully uh, everyone's happy with this. I, I honestly don't know how I, how I missed this. We are gonna start a time lapse here to chop up a couple of trees since we're gonna need the wood anyway to build the house so might as well just start it now and get ahead of it. So just to be clear uh, we are going to play the eco-friendly side of things so we chop down three trees I'm gonna place down three saplings especially the oak logs uh, they're gonna grow regardless of how much space they have so that's gonna be an easy fix. I think I'm gonna go ahead and uh, make a wheat farm just to keep us going with some food. Maybe I will do it on this other side so it's not too close to the base. Yeah, I could make it like somewhere here, like make a nice dirt area in the middle of it and then like build a small bridge that would get us to it. I think that would work fine. Okay, so we can probably take out some of this dirt to use for the wheat farm, which is basically leaving green since I'm going to be reusing it. We need the whole, I think a wooden one should be enough. So since we have this lava here, I built a cobblestone generator. So like this, we could have unlimited cobblestone just to use it for whatever we need. I'm going to need to make some charcoal to be able to make some campfires to build a nice bridge. In case you didn't know, you can extinguish the campfires with a shovel. Tutorial on how to build a bridge with Yuki. You lay down your campfires, extinguish them, maybe put them, you know, some of them a bit offset so it looks like, you know, it's been used. Then make some signs, stick them on the side of your bridge. Also, we can make the bridge look a bit more supported by just placing a few logs like this. And then we can maybe place a torch just to keep it lit up. And then we can probably do the same exact thing on this other side. Uh, where are my logs? They are gone. So one, two, 
two, three. Place a torch down. And there's your simple bridge. That should do us for now. Make the bridge a bit more accessible. We can maybe put down some trapdoors. Put another two at this end. And we have a bit of a step. So yeah, as you can see, I've actually placed uh, a few seeds down. I didn't manage to get too many from all the seeds around, but this is going to give us a start at least. To give the bridge a bit more color, I just added a couple of flowers, berry bush, once that grows up, it should give us a bit of contrast here. Maybe I'll change this to yellow since it's going to be too close to that. And then we can change this one to red just to kind of keep it a bit more varied. Been working a bit more on this, just making sure, you know, I have a bit of access so I don't have to keep jumping over blocks. Made some nice stairs here. Nothing too, too special, but does the job. In preparation to make some animal pens, I chopped down a couple more trees, so enjoy a nice new time lapse. So we built here a small chicken coop, if you can call it that. Just gonna try to get some meat, get some protein in. Parrots and the bats. Oh, there's a baby chicken. Let's see, can we get one? No. In case you didn't know, if you put a carpet on top of a fence, you'd be able to jump over it, but the mobs won't be able to actually escape. Finally got our first piece of wheat, so it's time to get some cows. Let's see if we can find any. Guess some sheep will have to do at the start. The wool could be pretty useful since we can shear them. Okay, so I definitely want to extend this, or do I maybe want to? Extend it on this side. So we have like a... Again a 3x3 three three area here. Okay, so this seems like a good area to build our first house in. So we're gonna gather a few more materials and see what I can actually come up with. Okay, so the house that I'm gonna make is gonna be a fairly small one. This is pretty much the footprint of it. I'm gonna have an entrance here, with just a single door. This is kind of like the entrance room, hallway if you want to call it. And then you get into the house and then we're gonna have like a, the bedroom and whatever. Probably gonna have a, an upstairs as well, but I'm still thinking about that.
I needed to get some spruce wood a bit faster, so I built two small platforms above the water to get rid of the podzol. So like that we're gonna be getting the two white trees, so it's gonna be much faster to farm. The way I like to harvest the big trees is to put ladders on the side of the tree, climb all the way up, and then chop from the top to the bottom. So I built a second floor now. I made it from darker wood just so it kind of looks like it's a newer addition to the house. In order to get some cobbled deep slate for the roof, I decided to just make a small mine underneath the house. So I pretty much mined straight down with some ladders. I stumbled across a huge ocean cave that even had some glow squid. And just when I got to deep slate level, I found another huge cave just underneath me. The first thing I discovered was surprisingly some diamonds. So I was not expecting to find such a huge cave right underneath the base. And I don't feel like I'm ready to explore it now, especially with all the mobs that are currently hiding in here. So I think we're going to leave it for another day until I get some armor and stuff. And then we'll see. For the moment, I'm just going to be here, mine some deep slate for the roof, and then we'll finish off the house. Going to be using a stone cutter here just to save a bit on materials since stairs are much cheaper by using this than a crafting table. I'm going to craft some wood stairs for the outline of the roof and we can finally start building. I'm pretty pleased how it turned out. I think it needs a bit more detail, but I would say as a general idea, it's okay. I'm not too good at making roofs, but I feel like the, the deep slate with the wood goes really well for a roof. So we'll see how, how much I can improve it later on. So I managed to kill a spider down in the mines. So I managed to make myself some scaffolding. So that should help us out a bit with detailing this building. Okay, so I added a few finishing touches here. I added a small planter there. Then I built a small potato farm here. I added a barrel just to keep that loot in there. I added a few lanterns at the top just to kind of add a bit of depth in there. Some bushes down the bottom. This kind of windowsill. I'm going to try to find a pot to maybe put that in there. It's going to make it look a bit nicer. And then I pretty much made a path just so it looks like it's actually a walkable road. And then I made these two kind of merge together. And then again, going to the animals too. If you have any suggestions on what I could add to the house to make it look a bit better at the start, feel free to leave them down in the comments and I will do my best to make it happen. So I've been doing a bit of work in between episodes just to kind of get the house a bit more finished. I added a few chests on the bottom level just to kind of keep things a bit more organized. For the upstairs, I didn't add too many things. I added like a small bedside table, a small bench here just to look out the window, and then a bit of extra storage with a crafting bench just to keep it a bit more organized. Along the house here, I tried to carve another path trying to keep the terraforming a bit, not to destroy the landscape too much, which just connects to our bridge here to the farm. I 
And I also added a small window blind here for the bottom small windows, just to kind of look like we were gonna close them up at night to, to keep us safe. Today's plan will be to build an iron farm. I want to be self-sustainable on this iron. I, I really need to get moving to iron tools because the stone tools are really tedious to deal with. So I know that there's uh, that village somewhere here. Um, I think it was on that side. I obviously forgot to get my boat with me. So I'll go back. Okay, boat acquired and as I was saying, I know there's a village really close by to here. I believe it was somewhere over here. There's like a shipwreck that should tell me where the village is. And then from there on should be easy enough to find. Oh, there it is. Yeah. So I want to go assess how many villagers we have. And then I'm going to need three of them to build this iron farm. Which should basically give us unlimited iron going forward. Probably going to update later on. You know, just to have a better one. But as a starter iron uh, iron farm, it's a really good one from, uh, from what I've seen. I, I've built it on a creative world first, just to kind of see how it works. And it seems to be pretty easy to, to get it done. Oh, there's actually a snowy biome here. Okay. So let's raid these houses, see what we can find around here. There's a compass, some paper, bread, sticks. I don't think I'll take the compass just yet. Oh, there's a librarian here. That's going to be really handy. I have a mason. Okay, so there's a good few villagers here. So what I will want to do is to try to get them all in a house and then block them in there and try to breed them to get a few more of them. So by ringing the bell I should be able to just get them all into a house. I think they're in range to do so. I'm gonna block them off like that for the time being. And I will actually need some beds, so I will probably take the beds from these houses here. I will need three beds to make this work. Hopefully there's going to be a total of three beds in here. That's perfect. And then one more. Nice. Right, so the way to make this work is I will need a trapdoor. Which I know definitely there is one here. And probably just take it from this uh, flower bed. So we will put the trap door right here to trick the baby villagers to think that they want to come out, right? Then I'm gonna make a hole to pretty much hold them in here. And. I'm gonna have to try to figure out the way to actually get them out from here first. And then take them over to back home basically. I think I'm going to build this first where they're gonna be sitting to have that ready before I start uh, transporting them over. So let's head back home and uh, build this thing.
Okay, so the last step now is to destroy these two dirt blocks and see if the farm actually functions. A golem should spawn pretty much straight away. The villagers don't seem to be panicking though. Maybe the zombie is too close to them? That could be a possibility. I'm gonna try not to die here. Ah, uh, that's what it was. So the zombie was way too close to the villagers for them to be scared. And there we go, we have our iron farm complete, the second golem being spawned in there. And here we are, our first iron from the farm. I'm going to make an attempt to a pumpkin farm up here. I know I'm probably going to need some pumpkins later down the line. So might as well just start now with it. And I think the seeds for them, I put them over here. I'll have to make this look a bit more pretty, but for the time being, it should be okay. And then... I'm gonna do this zigzag pattern. I definitely know that it's not the most efficient one, but... It's gonna have to do for the time being anyway. I believe if I place water in the middle of it, everything is gonna grow slightly faster. And I believe these also need some light, so I'll have to get some torches and maybe place them on all four of the corners just to make it look a bit better. And then I'm gonna try to maybe terraform this a bit better. Yeah, I think I have a small idea. Let me see and then uh, I'll see what I can come up with. In case you didn't notice, I do really like spruce wood. So I think I'm going to use this as an accent for this one. So like that is going to have a bit of contrast. This is also kind of to show the transition. We finally managed to get some iron tools so we can mine deep slate a bit better. Let's go check again on the iron farm. Like I've been playing for a good while now. So let's see how much iron I managed to, to gather. And yes, I know I will have to connect this as well at some point because it's not handy to having to do this every single time. Oh, two stacks and a half already. That is a really good one. Maybe I'll just take it away, right? Oh, there's another golem as we speak. Yes, and I will definitely have to connect this somehow. Maybe I'll make some kind of glass bridge. Just so the golems won't be able to spawn on it. But I, w I should get this connected in a way. Probably around this way maybe. Just heading down like that. Yeah, I feel like this would work. I just need to add a few slabs like this. And that's pretty much a path done. There's not much more to it. Yeah, I feel like this is kind of a pretty good thing to have. I'll pull in with the boat, stop here, and then I'm pretty much straight on the pathway and I'm home. I keep hearing a zombie around here, but I can't picture where it can be. Like, everything's been lit up. Is it up here? Oh my god, it is. How did you manage to spawn in there? I thought I had all the attic lit up. Clearly, that was not the case. Okay, let's pop a torch there then. And now we should be okay. At least that wasn't a creeper. Alright, so the next thing that I want to do is go down into the mine and maybe try to find some diamonds. I'm going to make a decent amount of torches first, just so it's going to last me a bit. And maybe even grab a bucket of water just in case we hit some lava. Okay, so 
we're pretty much at uh, y equals zero right now, so we got a good bit of digging to do. Found a big patch of tough here, and there's definitely a good few zombies around. Uh, found a cave. Alright, so it looks like we're pretty much down in this cave here, so maybe I'll actually have to try to explore. Doesn't seem like there's a way around this at this point anymore. So let's see. It's a pretty big cave around here. And it's never a good idea to go up in a cave. Oh, and we have a thunderstorm as well now. That was so loud. Oh, there's diamonds there. Okay, I think I will go out and sleep first because this thunderstorm is way too much. And I think it would be wise to potentially get some copper. Wow, this is loud. Yeah, I think it would be wise to get some copper and make a lightning rod. Just so we don't... Uh, get hit by lightning like if the house get hit, gets hit by lightning it would be pretty bad because it's basically all wood so I don't really want that to happen I think this is the first thunderstorm actually wait what How can I not sleep? It was a thunderstorm. Are you kidding me? Okay, let's see here. So I'm definitely going to try to go up. And light up a bit of this. Just so I can have a, a better view of the area. Like the cave goes fairly high. So, it's definitely not a safe place to be. And there's like a, a waterfall going down in here. I think that this is pretty much the cave that's on the other side. So I was hoping that we're going to be able to, uh, to avoid it. But it doesn't look like that was the case. And honestly, it's not a good idea not to have a shield in here. So, I'll go craft one and I'll be right back. Okay. Build acquired, so now let's start exploring. I'm gonna try to make myself a path here to actually go down rather than, than just jumping in. Oh my god, this bat! Oh. didn't know bats are so loud so which way do we go do i go right here a skeleton here by the way my my way of placing torches is to always place the torch on the right going in so like that when i come out i know that the exit will be with the torches on the left so it's going to be much much easier to find anything Okay, so there's very small caves around. There's a lot of tough around. Could be a nice building block further down the line. I think I'll definitely need some redstone. So might as well just grab it now. There is another cave going up here. Maybe try to eat. Stay at full health before diving into the whole thing. Seems like there's just uh, a lot of small caves being connected. There's not too much inside. I mean, never dig above you or dig down, but... 
Oh no, not a baby zombie. Oh man, baby zombies are the worst. Another one? Yeah, you better run. Okay. And here I was saying, like, I'm not prepared to explore, but then here I am exploring. Okay, I did see a skeleton there. What? Not today. Oh, there's more of them. Come on. Okay. You don't hit that hard, so that's that's okay. Don't think I'm gonna take the iron. I feel like I'm gonna want it later down the line for a building. Bit of lapis, a bit of gold. Oh, there's no creepers just falling on my head. Do I have shear? No, I don't have any shears. Yeah, so like I said, like torches on the left, you know your way out. Easy to find. Then let's see what's going on here. There's a bit more redstone. Not that much. So do I go left? I think this is where I came from, right? So let's mark this. Keep hearing a skeleton. I don't know where it is. I hope this doesn't take me in the really big cave system. I don't want to deal with that right now. Oh, and also keep in mind that I won't be able to craft any diamond armor or anything like that unless I discover it. So I need to trade with the villager or find it in the world before I'll be able to craft it. So I'll be pretty much in what I see in what you see right here. And I already ran out of torches. That's not good. Right? I'll be right back. Right. I made another 32 torches. I don't really have uh, enough coal. So I'll have to work that out. And maybe try and go mine some. So there's a, a cave up here. Not a big fan of unlit caves above me. So I will have to go up here. And here an Enderman. I am definitely not gonna gonna look at you. Okay. This cave kind of ends here. Oh, there's that spider. Get some string out of it. There's the diamonds. But I might want to light up a bit more here, just in case. Yeah, and like in big caves like this, oh my god. Yeah, I, I don't do good with jump scares like this. Is there a spider? Oh no, that's redstone. Yeah, what I, what I was about to say is that usually I will place torches on the floor where there's like big areas like this. What was that? These bats. There's a lot of things going, going around in these caves for sure. And I don't know how I feel about this gravel. Seems to be okay for now. There's a nice creeper. Good thing we made the shield. I can just pretty much blow them up. I don't need to worry about them. Looks like this zombie is not chasing me. Yeah. 
There's another skeleton. Let's eat. Out. Okay. Is there anything to be worried about above? No. Yeah, so any torches that I place like this is just uh, just for lighting. It's not to direct me out. Just more gold. So this pretty much goes back. And down to seven torches. It doesn't look too good. And then... Apparently we're at the end. There's so much stuff around here. I know where I'll come when I need it. So the next thing I'm gonna try to figure out is... How will I get a decent source of XP if I'm gonna make this enchanting table? So let's get that diamond. Is there any lava around? Doesn't look like it, so I think I'm safe to just mine it as it is. And it looks like it was just the one. Well, that's sad. Oh, I didn't get the achievement. Did I find diamonds before? I'll have to go back up and check the, the chests. I think I might have found some some diamonds somewhere. And I don't remember. Oh god. Okay, we're not going in there. Okay, I think that uh, that would do with uh, the exploration for now. Yeah, I did have diamonds in this chest here. I totally forgot about those. Well, the only thing that I still need then is obsidian, right? I got my water bucket. And I know there's definitely some lava somewhere on the right side here. Hello there. Uh, how did you spawn up there? Oh, I forgot to slab. Damn it. Okay, no panic. There is no panic. I need only one of these. Well, technically I need more than that. Yeah, I had to mess something up, right? It couldn't have been just normal. Okay, well, that just happened. Just hope all my items didn't burn in lava. Looks like there's a lot of them scattered around the place. And he's still up there, isn't he? Of course he is. Okay, let's put some of this back. My chest plate's up there, and my crafting table is here, and my shield. Can I use the shield against the golem? Okay, so he's down there now. So, I hope he doesn't go for the zombie. Okay, this seems to be working. Ow, 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 ow. Come on, regen. I think if he hits me, I'm dead.
Okay, we're almost there. Okay, should be okay from now on. Like, it was bound to happen that I'm gonna change something on the farm. And I'm gonna get killed by the golem, right? Oh yes, and we definitely need to write this in the book. First death, 28th of August, 2023. Alright, so the first step is to actually make a diamond pickaxe. Just so I can mine the obsidian. And I just realized that I actually only have four diamonds, so I need to go mining and get one more in order to make the enchanting table. Our first obsidian. Now three more and we can get started on the enchanting table. Right, so I'll make a book as well, just so we are ready. We have the four obsidian, so all we need now is the extra diamond, right? So I believe the table goes like that, and then we're missing the one diamond here. I'm probably not going to go mining this episode. Uh, it's probably going to take a while to find another diamond, so I'll leave that for the next one. We're going to make a nice enchanting table area. I'm not sure if I'm going to make it here or maybe I'm going to make it outside. But I'm going to make it nice and pretty. Going to try to get some bookshelves, get the max enchanting on it. And then hopefully I'll be able to actually go into the nether the next episode as well. Try to get some quartz and automate some of the sugar cane and maybe bamboo and stuff. I took my time to make a path in between all the places that we're currently walking to. So I got a small staircase here, small path here. I'm going to have to make a bridge to those two trees there. That's my current wood farm. And then I also made the path over here. Added some lighting, some jack-o'-lanterns with leaves, just so they're not too visible. And they provide a good bit of light. So I managed to make a railing here. That pretty much goes all the way to the iron farm. And then here, I couldn't really figure out what to do, so I just made the glass bridge for the time being. That uh, basically allows me to open up the chest there. Also, I made the decision to play with shaders. They are not changing the game too much, so it's still keeping that vanilla view. But it adds a few things around it that, you know, just makes it pop a little bit more like the sky and all that there's like constellations and there's also like rainbows and all these kind of things and the lighting it's like so much nicer also in between episodes i i went mining and i managed to get two more diamonds so that would give me enough to make that enchanting table that we were looking for last time i was waiting to make it live with you guys so here we go I'm gonna even place it down. I'm not gonna get the achievement until I enchant something, so we're gonna have to wait for that one. But now we have it, and I need to figure out a place where I want this done. The plan for this episode is to build a carrot and potato farm. I've been playing a bit on the testing world, and I managed to design something that looks pretty cool. I didn't finish the building around it yet, but I do have the farm built, so we're probably going to get that done in this episode. And then, depending on how much time I have, it's either going to be done this episode or I'm going to make the building in the next one. Right, so first things first, I need to make myself a boat because I don't remember where I left the other one. I'm going to put my diamond back here and the enchanting table because we don't need that right now. And I'm going to head out to that village and then see what I can do there. Oh yeah, also the, the water, I feel like it's the reflection, it's a bit strong, but it looks so much nicer when you're underwater actually. And the, the sun rays, it, it just looks amazing.
remember last time we seen this snowy biome so let's see if there's anything around it first before i i start on the villager piece oh that's an igloo i wonder if it has a basement i mean not that i need it because i already have the villagers it does anything in the furnace no all right let's go down yeah, there we go. That's how they teach you. You basically grab the potion from here, golden apple from here, throw it onto the zombie villager, cure it with the apple, wait a while, and then you get basically two villagers to breed them up. The igloo spawned right next to a village. Would have been really handy if there wouldn't been a village around. But... It's, it's good to have it there. You never know. Let's see what we have to work with in this village here. So I think I already captured those two villagers last time, right? Oh yeah, this... These shaders actually make all the ores glow in the dark. Which is both cool and isn't. Did I not trap two villagers last time? Oh, here. There's a cow. Yeah, so there's two of them. Is it two? Yeah, it's two of them in here. So all I have now is to figure out how exactly do I want this to work. Maybe I'm going to make a hole in the side of the house. So like that, I'm going to be able to grab them from this height rather than getting them from a hole. It's going to be so much more difficult. So for now, this is just going to be a temporary thing. I will modify it later. I just want to get some villagers going and then I need to find an area here that would actually fit my farm so that's gonna be the tricky bit. I feel like if I level this side here this might fit. I think I'll have to run back to the base grab some supplies and I'll be back and get a start on it. Just to show you what I meant with the constellations and then you can also see the moon the reflections of the light. So it's just so much better with the shaders. It's still the same game, but it doesn't change too much. Okay, so I'm back with a few resources. Made a temporary bed, crafting bench. Got a barrel here. Some iron here, just to get some tools in case that the ones that I have break. I'll probably need a good bit of wood as well. So let's get started on it. Okay, so to start this off, I'll need five hoppers here, one in the middle and then the other four facing into it. On this hopper is where the villager will be sitting on. And then the farms are going to be extended on each of these four corners for the four farmers to throw crops to this one in the middle. So to start the farm up manually, I'm going to try to get some crops from this farmer here. I think there's both carrots and potatoes over here, so we should be okay. Yeah, there we go. I know it's a bit of a waste to just break them without them being harvestable, but it's okay because we're going to make something much bigger than this, so it's fine. So I'm going to make these two carrots, these two potatoes. So obviously this is going to be really slow until I manage to get this whole thing expanded. Alright, so as you can see, the farm is growing pretty well. The carrots are a bit slower than the potatoes, but we're gonna get there. I added a villager here. He 
is surrounded by four minecart hoppers with the hoppers underneath and then the minecraft hoppers are actually sitting on rails so this villager will never actually move from here i also added these four trap doors here i saw in a video i'll try to find it and link it in the description that if you add the trap doors the farmer villagers won't be able to see any other villagers except the central one so all the crops are going to be thrown down the middle i'm going to make this farm just with fences so it's going to be fences all around a too high fence just so the villagers can see each other and throw crops at each other so a too high wall will guarantee that so yeah now we wait for the crops to grow i'm trying to get some more villagers to get the farmers in here and then I'll bring you guys back once I have something more to show. So all the four quadrants are done now. All I need is to get the villagers in. So I need to start breeding those two up. I already got the beds for them. So now I just need to wait to get a few more crops, breed them up, bring them in, and then we should have a fully working farm. As you saw from the time lapse, our villagers are now in. They have already started farming. Let's check if we got anything yet. Usually they take a while. Alright, so two stacks and a half of potatoes, almost two stacks of carrots. So it does take a while until they start producing and throwing carrots to the villager in the middle. But the farm seems to be working now. I have also added lightning rod there. Just in case there's a thunderstorm, none of the villagers would get hit and turn into a witch or something. That's just a safety net until I manage to build a building around it. Probably once I have a few more resources, I'm gonna transform the farm a bit and make it work with some minecarts underneath and maybe make it a bee powered farm. It's going to be a bit faster than what it is right now, so it's probably going to be a good addition to it. So for now, just enjoy a time lapse with the farm fully operational. Today, we have really big plans. The idea is, I want to get some tools and armor from the villagers. So I already started breeding these two in the house here. I got one so far. I'm gonna try to get three. Get a toolsmith, an armorer and a weaponsmith. Like that, we'll be able to get all the diamond armor and all the diamond tools that we need. And then we can proceed with the next step which is going to be making an actual path all the way back to the base. The only way to get there now is going by boat. And sometimes it's a bit annoying when I actually forget the boat. So the idea is going to be to make a bridge that is going to go from this island over on this far side here. So from there, it's going to go to that island. From that island, it's going to go to that one. And that one actually links directly to the base, so I'm going to have to expand the paths that we made last time. Also, I want to make this village a bit more accessible. At the moment, I keep jumping over everything to get up here. So I want to make a nice path to get me to the village, get me to the villagers, and make it a bit more walkable. In between episodes, I also did a bit of work. I made a small pumpkin farm here to be able to trade with the villagers. And then I AFK'd a bit. It wasn't too much. I didn't have too much time. But we managed to get a good few crops here. And I also managed to trade with the villagers a bit. So got a stack and a half of emeralds. I also managed to find a spot in the middle of the ocean here. That's pretty much in between the iron farm and the crop farm. So like that I'm able to load both farms at the same time. So I managed to get a, a bit more iron. The first order of business is going to be to get this villager here and try to get him in the house that I made for him. So this one is going to be the, I believe, armor or the toolsmith. I'm not 100% sure what I made. But this is going to be their house. 
Yeah, it's a toolsmith. So hopefully he is gonna run straight into the house. There we go. Now I hope you stay there. That is perfect. Actually, I'd rather have the door facing the other way. So now you are a toolsmith. Uh, let me turn off this. And then we are going to have to trade, unfortunately, some stone tools to level up. There we go. I'm also going to need a trap door to put here so he won't be able to actually get out. Okay, now we have the iron trade. So we should be able to trade some iron here. And already we got an efficiency 2 axe. Let me get rid of these shovels first. Because we're definitely not going to use them. Oh no! Ah, oh, that was a sneaky creeper. Ah, uh, don't you dare. Don't you dare blow up on me. Where did that creeper spawn? I would say he was pretty far away because I tried to light up all the area around here. Okay, I was trying to get rid of those shovels, right? Good thing that I managed to see that creeper. Alright, so we got the, an efficiency 2 axe now. Do I want to trade more iron? I guess so. Gives the best XP. Is he gonna reset though? Because all the other things barely give anything. And I wouldn't want to necessarily get another axe in case I get a diamond axe. Oh, there we go. He reset. Okay, come on with the diamond tools. Diamond axe. Nice. Efficiency 2 on breaking, tr on breaking 2. That's a really, really good axe right there. Okay, so the next step would be to... Oh, I can trade even more iron. I definitely wasn't expecting that. Come on, a pickaxe. Oh my god. Efficiency tree, silk touch, and unbreaking tree. I don't think I ever got a villager with such a good trade. This is absolutely insane. Absolutely insane. Okay, well, I guess uh, it paid off a lot. Probably the next step would be to get uh, also mending villagers so I don't lose these. But then again, I can always buy them again so I don't really have to worry that much. Okay, that's uh, really good news. Thank you very much for uh, your cooperation. And I'll uh, try to get some other villagers now. It's gonna be a while because I need to breed these guys and then I'll need to craft the grindstone and whatever else. I think it's a blast furnace for the armor. I'll do this and then I'll bring you guys back once I'm done. All right, I managed to get two more villagers here. I already made the house for one of them, which is gonna be the armor. I hope I grabbed, yeah. Got the one. There's another baby inside there, so I didn't want to grab both of them at the same time. The armor's gonna leave in the house of the mason. It's not ideal, but uh, at the moment I don't really need a mason. And as an idea, down the line I actually want to make the villagers like to roam free around the village, so I'm gonna make a fence all around the thing so they can have their own house, go in, go out, so kind of keep it more animated. So that's why I'm not gonna bother too much now in which what house I put them in. I just want them to be safe for the time being and then later on I'll, I'll have the modifications done. 
So let's hope he actually goes inside there as well. I totally forgot to grab my iron door. So that's not good. Uh, iron door, here we go. Now we need to run quick here. Yeah, that's why I said run quick here, because I know that uh, they don't really care. There we go. And did I grab a trap door? Absolutely not. So I hope he's not going to jump out. There we go. Gonna take a trap door. I think I have one left. There we go. Which is then going down here. So that's gonna let me go through, but he won't be able to actually get out. So now I need to start trading with him again. Let's see if I get as lucky as I got with the pickaxe. I don't have that much iron left, so I might have to go back to the iron farm and get some more. But we'll see how far I can get. So I don't necessarily need the armor. But I guess for now, I can probably afford to just take more damage this way. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to need that many pants. Right, so I got the iron here. Come on, give me something good. More iron trades. I, I really hope he unlocks though. Because if not, it's going to be a bit tricky. Oh, that was instant unlock. Okay, that works. Thank you very much. Now, there we go. This is what I was waiting for. Protection, two leggings. Diamond boots, pro projectile protection. It's not too bad, not too bad. I'm definitely going to take these straight away. And I'm going to take a pair of those as well. Put them on. Don't even think about them. And now I'm going to have to get him to master. Oh, I had the exact amount of iron. Like That's what I like to see. And now, come on. Give me something nice. Aqua Affinity. Projectile protection. Not the best, but not the worst either. Oh, I just bought two by mistake. And I was just a couple of emeralds off. Oh well. It's okay. So yeah, I definitely won't need the leggings now. So I can just get rid of them. I will keep the mending boots. I want to make a special thing for them since they were the first piece of armor that I got. So now I need a few more emeralds. So let's grab a few more carrots and potatoes from here. I get some emeralds and then get a full suit of armor. Of diamond armor, that is. So yeah, it's not the best way to go in but it will have to do he's almost at master so i'm gonna be able to unlock the golden carrots so i'm gonna be doing very good on food once i do that put all these back maybe put the boots in there as well then where was that guy here Chest plate. Uh, whoops. There we go. Now we're fully kitted out in diamond gear. So I can actually go start maybe exploring the mines a bit more. But like I said, the plan is to actually build a path today. So I got a third villager ready here. He's gonna be our armor. I got the house all prepared. The door is in place this time, so I don't forget about it. 
And I also realized actually that the toolsmith that we got didn't actually have the shovel trade. So I'll probably have to get another one if I want a diamond shovel as well. Okay, let's break this door. F3B, make sure we don't hit the villager. And he's in. Okay, so unfortunately, I'm gonna have to again spend some emeralds on things that I don't need. But uh, I guess that's just how it works. Then we can just uh, abuse the iron trade. I managed to get a good, a good bit of iron. Yeah, I guess it's gonna be the same iron trade again. I'm breaking one, so it's a worse axe than we got with the previous villager. Okay, so he locked out. Hopefully he's going to restock. Are you going to restock? Yeah, I heard the sound. No? I thought he would. Okay, I'm going to take the ironing it back. Come on, you can do it. You can do it. Come on. I don't really want to use it on random items. I'd rather just wait the night, to be honest, for him to restock. Rather than just wasting emeralds for nothing. I don't really have that many yet, so... Oh, I knew I forgot something. The trapdoor. Where was my house? Here. Or maybe I didn't have a trapdoor, that's why. I will need one more of this. And... Trapdoor. Oh, and I picked up all those axes, so I'm gonna throw those away. Put the trapdoor in. Jury stock? Still no. Don't really have anything else to trade and yeah i don't i really don't want to waste it i'm just gonna wait until potentially soon uh where did the sun rise there so it might be time for him to restock actually yeah there we go okay give me the sword unbreaking one I guess it's better than nothing. Yeah, so the next step would be to try to get an additional armor. Not armor, sorry. An additional weaponsmith. That would be able to give us... Give us the shovel. At the moment it's not too important. But it would be nice to have a shovel as well. Okay, so let's see. What do we have to work with here? So I'm definitely going to need a few iron shovels since I don't have a diamond one now. Because I'm going to probably make a lot of uh, paths. Then I can drop these in here. The emeralds as well. And then let's see first what we have to work with. I'm probably gonna make like a small bridge or something. It's not gonna be anything too special. I got some resources made up and I finally found a spot for the bridge. It's gonna be this one here. It's gonna be a small bridge just going across this with a bit of an arch just so we can actually still go the boat through. So let's start that time lapse.
so this is my take on a simple bridge. I hope you guys enjoyed the time lapse. I know it still needs a bit of touch ups, probably. Uh, maybe some bushes around or something like that just to make it a bit more lively. But for the time being, that's going to work. It's going to get us across the water, so I don't really see any issues with it at the moment. And then the path is going to extend, it's going to go over. And then it's going to be the exact same thing going over that cliff to the right and then getting to the village. I know it's probably not the best route to get there, but at least it adds a bit to the experience of traveling. So potentially I'm going to get a horse later down the line. So like that, I'm going to be able to actually walk the path all the way through. I managed to do both paths, both from here to the small bridge and then from the small bridge all the way to the village. And the next step is going to be to gather some more resources and actually build this bridge. I'm going to try to make a diagonal one. So it's going to start pretty much from here. And then let's see, did I measure this correctly? Mm, absolutely not. I think it is this block here, in fact. Yeah. Then it's gonna just go on a diagonal here. I think I can use some dirt to make this proper. And in theory, I could just use dirt for the whole diagonal. I don't know why I'm bothering too much since I'm not gonna be using the wood. This is going to have a bit of an arch as well. But it's going to be a bit bigger than the previous one. And now with the bridge complete, just need to add the finishing touches just to keep it nice and lit up. The lanterns make a really good addition and the fact that you can attach them to the trapdoors really makes a lot of difference. And there we go, a simple diagonal bridge. Actually, I'm totally lying. I need the trapdoors so you don't fall off the bridge. And then it's going to be one trapdoor like that. And then I believe here I need to add some dirt. And there we go. Gonna repeat this on all sides. And then I'll bring you guys back. Now that looks so much better. And you can actually see it now. It's almost nighttime. You can see the lanterns and lighting up the bridge pretty nicely. Probably gonna have to continue this path now, go all around, and then pretty much get all the way next to the iron farm where we did the path last time. Okay, so we finally made it all the way home with the path. This is how it looks like here. You probably already saw it on the time lapse. And I'm going to try to take a walk all the way back just to make sure that there's no jumping needed or anything like that. So this wandering trader just showed up here and guess what he has. 
He actually has moss blocks and a mangrove propagule. So I already bought these and I put them in the chest. I'm not going to buy more. I don't want to waste more emeralds. But it's a, a really, really nice surprise to see the moss there and the mangrove is just a bonus. Also, I didn't show it in a time lapse or anything like that, but I managed to get the paths going here as well. So this one goes all the way down to that dock. And then around here, everything is pretty much linked. There's no jumping needed or anything like that to the pumpkin farm. There's a path down to the villagers. And uh, yeah, pretty much everything is connected right now. So we pretty much achieved our goal for this episode. In this episode, I want to get kitted out a bit more with my armor. So I'm going to try to build an XP farm with the skeleton spawner that I found earlier on. I'm going to try the old fashioned way for the moment with the enchanting table, see how long it's going to take me. And then if it's going to be way too slow, I'm going to try to get some villagers. So we are going down into the mines. I believe the skeleton spawner is somewhere here on the left. I marked it off with a torch. Could be this one. Yeah, there it is. While I was planning the farm, I actually realized that I need to get some soul sand. So I started mining some obsidian to get to the nether. And then I started clearing out the area where I want the nether portal to be. Alright, so that's the portal there. Nothing too special. It's good enough for my building skills. Okay, fingers crossed. Please be good. Okay, we need to go deeper. We are in a crimson forest, so it's not the best spawn to actually find the soul sand that I need. Okay, so there's a lot of uh, hoglins around, so I definitely don't want to get close to those. In order to get soul sand, I need to find a fortress, a bastion, which honestly I don't really feel like finding right now, or to find some nether wastes. I'm not sure if the ceiling is a giveaway and there's a nether waste that way. So maybe I can climb up top of these trees and then try to kind of branch out and see if the biome changes maybe. I mean, it's gonna look pretty bad, right? Regardless of what I do here. I think I need the hole for this, right? Yeah, probably. Honestly, I don't even know what, which one would be the best place to go. I guess this one seems closer, so maybe I'll try that way. And if I don't get anywhere after a while, then I can just turn around and go the other way. I didn't really come prepared with too many blocks to be honest and I just need to be careful that these hoglins can't actually get up to me I think I can just cut right through that I need to be careful there's probably a lot of lava pockets I can hear the lava everywhere around me so it's gonna be an interesting thing to do also not to mention that I need to go about 50 blocks lower than this so hopefully that's gonna work as well i'm probably only gonna start going down once i actually hit the biome that i need the spawn was definitely not the best and the nether is definitely much scarier with the new updates oh i'm in the nether wastes now i didn't even notice how far am i okay here Okay, so maybe it's time to start going down. Gonna be a pretty long way down, but I guess there's not really any other way. Yeah, we hit lava here and I'm afraid that this might be a lava lake actually. Or? Oh no, it was just a single pocket, okay. Okay, there's some magma blocks here. So that means there's like lava really close by, I believe. The question is, how close is it? There it is. So technically, soul sand would spawn somewhere underneath this level. So 
going by the sound, I think this is actually a lava lake, so it's probably unlikely that I'm gonna find any soul sand around here. I know lava's underneath this. Maybe I'll just try to make my way straight across the lava lake. Maybe see where I managed to get. It's scary to say the least. One wrong move and I'm pretty much gone. So it looks like I'm running out of dig space. So would it be worth to take a left here and see how far I can get like this? And maybe I'll, I'll put this as a protection barrier. I think I'm just gonna try to go around this gravel. Okay, lava lake again. Ooh, that is so sand confirmed. Okay, so I just need to figure out the way to get out of here and actually get there without dying. I guess I'm gonna keep trying the diagonal way, maybe? Seems to be working fine so far. I'm close now. I can hear some hoglins. So that's definitely not a good thing. Like, realistically, how much soul sand do I need? Okay, I got one more. That's okay. How much did we get? Three soul sand? Technically, I only need one. Okay, and I'm back at the portal now. Let's try to go down without dying. Okay, that was scary. That was really, really scary. So, the next thing to find now is kelp. Problem is, I can't really see underwater with the shaders. Oh yeah, that's kelp, alright. Oh, what's that? That's a ruined portal. Okay, maybe it would be smart to gather these with a boat, no? So since I found this, let's explore the portal. Maybe there's gonna be something nice in it. Oh, I forgot about the bubbles. So there's a lot of them. So there's a chest there. And uh, I think I'm just gonna go in. Obsidian... This fire charge and a clock and a drowned fighting. Okay, let's go back up. So I already dug a pretty substantial hole here that should give enough clearance for the mob spawner to keep working. So now I'm just gonna have to make the area where I'm gonna be. So it's, I think it's probably gonna be behind that wall and then the chute that's gonna get the mobs all the way up and then back down. As you can see here, I finished up the room for the skeleton farm. Basically, the spawner is just behind this wall. I made a small design. I kind of like it, to be honest. It kind of has a bit of contrast. The roof is nothing special, but kind of turned out okay. But I really like the sides, like with the indent and the use of the bone blocks. And the skeletons just keep falling, basically. I think I've been here for like maybe five ten minutes and i already have a chest of this and i keep dropping this so i definitely need to get a hopper and a chest here just to automatically collect everything so i don't have to manually sort through everything so that's probably going to be the next step and i'm probably going to make an enchanting table somewhere behind this wall or ideally it would be somewhere close to this so i don't have to keep walking so I'll have to figure out the way I want it to be done. So for the enchanting table, I actually came up with something else. I just put it here in the wall and then there's bookshelves behind this. That basically gives me the level 30 that I actually need. So I feel like it's, it's a pretty good fit and it doesn't take any space. And then I added two grindstones here, just so I can unenchant things that I don't actually need. Now I'm just gonna spend some time here, swinging away, getting some XP. And I'm gonna try to get some more enchantments for all the items. Probably try to aim for the max enchantments that I can get for now. And then I'm gonna try to get a mending villager as well, and that's gonna give me the full gear that I actually need.
All right, so I think it's about four or five hours since I've been trying this. I finally managed to get all the items fully enchanted and while the mobs were spawning I actually completed this tunnel more or less. So I got this done all the way here and then all the way to the end on this side. The next step would be to get the staircase that would go all the way up to the bubble elevator. So it's going to be a bit of a nicer staircase rather than the one wide one that I had before. So probably this I'm going to do in between episodes. It's going to be a bit of a grind to dig and gather all the resources. To show you guys, I basically got everything fully enchanted. Got a hard hat, a safety vest, safety trouser, safety boots. Then we got a stick and two diamonds. A silk and a lucky spoon. Got Hawkeye here. It's not, I think it is fully enchanted actually. I went ahead with mending just because I have the skeleton farm so I can afford to get the arrows non stop. And then if I don't like it, then I can always switch to the infinity part of it. The next step is probably going to be to add the, an automatic killing mechanism because at the moment they just keep coming here and they just die from entity cramming so if i manage to get it more automated it would be a bit better or i'm gonna maybe attempt to add a light source in there like a toggleable one so like that i won't have to bother with the farm spawning while i don't want it to so yeah i think this is it for this episode we pretty much achieved the goal i managed to get fully enchanted armor it's been a while and it took a while to get both the Mending Villager and all the XP since the grinder is a bit slow. But we finally managed to get there. As you can see here, I finished up the tunnel all the way up. It was a bit tricky to get it done all the way to the end with the bubble column in place. But I think I did a pretty good job in hiding this. So now it actually is a functional tunnel. I don't have to struggle to get up or down. It's just a normal staircase. Then the bubble column just takes me all the way up. After finishing the tunnel, I also worked a bit on the path that we built the previous episodes. And I added these lampposts. They are going pretty much all the way back to the village. It was definitely a grind to get all the resources for that. But it ended up being pretty nice. So as you can see, they pretty much go all the way across the bridge and then they end up at the village. The plan for today's episode though is going to be to make the village very villager friendly. I want to have the village where the villagers can just walk by themselves and they don't have to just be closed into a house so we can actually have some movement in the village rather than just a static plain old building. I'm going to try to make the space as big as I can, but I'm going to try to avoid all the holes in the ground. For example, on the other side of the village, there's like a really big ravine. So I'm not going to allow them to go over on this side. So I'm probably going to fence it off before this hole here. So they should have enough space to wander around the area. I'm probably going to have to get rid of these bushes as well, because they're probably going to hurt themselves. So I'd rather not have any of them die because these are going to be villagers that I actually use for trading. Also, as a secondary goal, since at the moment I only have the lampposts put along the path, I want to actually make it nicer alongside the path so it doesn't look that plain. So I'm going to try to use the moss a bit more, maybe add some wood fences, kind of make it a bit nicer to walk around and maybe if I manage to make it a bit more mob proof as well. Before I go ahead and fence the whole area off, I'm definitely going to need a lot of wood. So I think I'm going to go back to the first base that I built. And then I'm going to try to use that wood farm because it's a bit easier to due to the water being there. So enjoy a nice time lapse of cutting down trees and I'll see you back in a bit. Alright, so we got the wood now, so let's start planning out the area that I want the villagers to be in. 
And I think the first thing is going to be to put a gate here. Because I don't think I want them to wander down over here. It's going to be a bit tricky to make the fence on the hill. So I'm probably just going to mark it off here. Get it closed off at this house. So they're not going to be allowed to walk behind these houses here. So it's going to stop pretty much around this line. And then it's going to go around. Probably stop at the pumpkin and melon farm. Maybe go a bit around around those houses and then behind those. So it's going to be a decent enough area. And I don't want it to have it too big because then they're just going to wander off too far away from their workstations. So then they might just die for whatever reason. They are villagers in the end. Okay, so the layout is pretty much complete now. This is how it looks like from above. So it's just a fence around the houses, like I said. And then I added some fence gates at key points. One here. One at the entrance at the village here. And then another one over here. I have also added a lightning rod here. And I added some iron bars just to look a bit more realistic. This is just to make sure that none of the villagers actually get hit by lightning in case of a thunderstorm. I'm now going to work a bit around the village. And then I can let them out and see if I messed up and they managed to get out somehow. Alright, so the last step here is to replace these iron doors with wooden doors. So the villagers can open them themselves. And that should allow them going forward to be free around the village. Then the last two are the ones that I use for the breeder. I actually made this. I closed off the whole thing. So I'm going to make a different villager breeder once I need it. So for the moment, they're pretty much free to roam around the village. This guy got this barrel. So he's now a fisherman. Then the other ones didn't actually leave the houses yet, but I'm expecting they will soon enough. It's probably still morning, so it's going to be a while until they leave. And they're definitely going to be leaving in the evening to go for a gossip around the bell, I believe. Oh, there we go. We have the librarian roaming around a bit. Maybe I can take this and instead of having the lectern here for the librarian, I can actually put it in the house that belongs into. I believe it was here. Yeah. Oh, he got the other one. That's okay as well. Yeah, so maybe it would be a bit tricky to get this guy to be another librarian considering how many barrels and other things I have around here. But for now, I don't necessarily need anything from the villagers, so he can be a fisherman if he wants to. Like I said, it's now evening time and here they are gathering around the bell, having some gossip. I believe some iron golems would also spawn if they do gossip and probably once some mobs start spawning around when I'm AFKing, they're probably going to spawn even more. So the outside area is going to be a bit more protected as well, just in case anything gets close enough. Alright, so for the next step is going to be to improve the path going all the way to the village. And it's going to be something around these lines. I want to add a bit more color to make it look a bit more full. I'm probably going to use a few fences to kind of break it down a bit more to break the color. But that's kind of the whole idea. And the thing is that once we get their wings, it should look very nice from above. So I'm not just preparing for walking the path, but it's going to look very nice once we fly over it. And I want to keep the whole world very aesthetic when you look at it from above. So that's why I kind of wanted to get this path in between everything that I have. So it looks so much better rather than just flying over plain terrain that just looks normal. So I have most of the things that I need. The moss, the bone blocks for the bone meal. I have the wood prepared. The one thing that I still need are going to be some oak leaves. So I think I'm going to set up an area where I'm going to keep replanting the oaks so I don't destroy the forest. And then I'm going to come back and st start working on the path. Since inventory space is a bit limited, I'm going to do the moss first. Go all the way through to the village. 
And then I'm probably going to come and then add the leaves and the fences and all the other things to make it look a bit more pretty. So it's looking like this with everything grown up with all the moss around. I actually added some light underneath the carpets to make it even more spawn proof. And the next step is going to be to add all these fences that I have with the leaves. I'm going to try to make it work. I'm not going to overdo it too much, but I'm going to make it so the path feels a bit more enclosed. Yeah, so I'm going to go all the way through to the other side of the base. So it's going to be kind of a fence like that maybe add some leaves like this add one behind maybe maybe add a bit of height onto it then in random places just add one fence post just to keep it more varied I could probably make it even more enclosed but I don't want to make it too much Yeah, maybe a few leaves behind that. Probably gonna have to grow a few more trees. I don't think I have enough leaves. But for now it's gonna do. I feel like this doesn't work if it connects. It needs to be kind of by itself for this to work. And then I can probably put leaves like that. One there. Maybe some like this. Get rid of some of the grass. I feel like too much grass makes it look kind of bad. And also, if anyone is watching Keralis, he's saying that more leaves are always better than less. And... I think I definitely agree. If it's too empty, it feels way too empty. But if you add too many, I feel like it still looks too good. So I think I'm going to go with the too many option, probably. By the way, I also remember that I added a small uh, resource pack here. So the saplings now kind of have a second growth stage just to add a bit of more variation to it. The leaves I see that they're actually moving because of the, um, not the resource pack, but the uh, shaders. There we go. So I'm trying to farm a few more leaves. I'm just kind of planting saplings, chopping them down, replanting. And I believe probably going forward, I'm gonna add a few trees around here. I feel like it would make the path look a bit more full. Like if this would be all filled along the path rather than just be an empty field. Got to the bridge and I ran out of leaves like four times. I ran out of fences once. I have three left now. So I definitely need to farm a bit more to actually get to the base. But it's going along well, I would say. It's basically looking really, really nice. And I'm really happy how it turned out. It looks so much fuller now. Maybe get rid of this. And... It actually looks like it's separated from the rest of the road. And the trees would definitely make a really big difference. Now that I see them added here, I think it's going to change the whole landscape if I have those. Maybe I will add some different trees and the contrast in between them might make them a bit better. Also, if you have any suggestions about the path that I could do, please let me know down in the comments. I'm thinking to maybe add some lanterns on the fence posts that are a bit further away from the actual lamp posts. It could add a nice little dynamic, but I'm not too sure about it. I'm gonna have to test it first. Finally made it back to the base. 
I think I'm gonna leave this empty here. Just kind of leave it as a cliffside. Maybe I'll replace the sand with something. Maybe with like either dirt or something not to be sand. It just looks like wrong. But other than that, the path is actually fully complete now. So added this uh, azalea bushes, the azalea leaves. I totally forgot that I can actually get those with shears. Or you could even get them with a hoe, but I didn't have silk touch on it. So the path is looking really, really nice. And I'm really happy and proud how this turned out. It looks pretty much the same all the way to the end. So obviously here I had a bit less space, so it had to be a bit empty. But at least you can enjoy the view. You can see the horses all the way in the distance. And the lamps with everything just, just makes it all come together, I guess. I think the next piece is going to try to add a few trees on that clearing over there that's closer to the village. I think we can see it probably from here. Yeah, so... It's a bit of an empty area around there, so maybe where those two trees are here, I'm going to try to add a few more just to kind of look a bit more enclosed, let's say. Also, in this path here, I added an azalea tree, and it actually looks really, really cool how this area is fully enclosed by the trees and the leaves and everything else. So I kind of want the same aesthetic across the board. I don't know if I'm going to manage to do it this way. And I don't know if I wanted this thick across all the path, but I feel like it works here. It just like kind of turns around the corner and then you pretty much get here. You walk across and you almost see the, the bridge that we built. So you can see all the signs, well, the lampposts going all across the, the valley there. And then here you can see those trees in the way and then you can actually see part of the path all the way here. So I added a few trees here, but I'm not 100% sure that I really like it. It kind of fills up the space, but I don't know if it absolutely belongs here like this. Maybe if I leave them a bit more scarce like that, kind of looks like the river kind of took over and then some of the trees kind of started growing now almost. I feel like if I would add too much, it wouldn't really work too well. So I'm probably gonna leave it like this for now and maybe figure out something a bit later. Here's a full above video of the path with all the trees, the bushes, the lampposts, everything in between. Like I said, if you feel like I could add anything to make it even better, just let me know down in the comments. And I'll definitely take up your suggestions. I definitely want to make the world look more aesthetic and I feel like this is a very good step in the good direction. So here we are again at the end of the episode. I pretty much achieved what I wanted for this to get all this path fully complete all the way through. The big thing is going to be to make all the paths look very nice through all the places that we're going to be traveling to. So that's going to be a challenge in itself. But then again, I'm probably going to use the nether for really far away places, so it's not going to be too bad. We finished up the path in the last episode, and since we're getting very close to episode 10, I want to start building a farm or two in order to get some firework rockets, in order to kill the dragon, and get our wings. Getting the wings would make it really really easy to get around the world, because at the moment, it seems to be a bit annoying to travel everything, even with the boat or even with the path fully built. So getting the wings right now, it would be an absolute game changer. So the first thing that I'm going to build is going to be a general mob farm. And I think I'm going to use Nembom's design. It's an old design, but it's really reliable and simple to make. And that should give uh, pretty much everything that I need from rotten flesh to string, bones, arrows everything so there's no point to build a particular farm especially that i'm gonna get gunpowder for this too so i'm gonna be able to use it for rockets as well and then i'm not sure if it's gonna happen this episode but the next piece is gonna be to build a sugarcane farm once i have both of those done or at least the mob farm i'll be able to get some rockets and then pretty much get ready for the end 
I'm probably gonna have to explore the nether as well a bit because I'm gonna need those blade rods in order to craft the eyes of ender but I'm hoping it should be easy enough to find a stronghold but then again our nether spawn it's pretty bad so who knows so yeah I'm gonna go down into the mines maybe even find some diamonds while I'm at it and I'm not exactly sure what I want this to be built from. I was thinking at one point to make it maybe out of bone blocks. I don't know how it would look in the sky though. And obviously I'm gonna have to find an area where I want to build this. That's pretty much at sea level so... Maybe the mob farm would actually be... Better built in the middle area in between the two bridges. Yeah, I was thinking pretty much about this area. It's like a pretty flat area, so I wouldn't have to destroy a lot of grass around here. And it's pretty much at sea level, so basically I can just go up, make the farm in the sky. And potentially make something around it. I'm not too sure what I want to make yet, so I'm probably gonna have to decide what would actually look okay to have here. So until I come up with that, it's probably just going to be a floating island. Actually, that would be a pretty cool idea to try to make a floating island out of it. Yeah, it, uh, it could actually work pretty well. I'm just going to have to make it spawn proof, basically, but it could be a very good idea. And I'm still not decided, but I think I might go ahead and make it out of bones. Like, I have a lot of bone blocks and it would save me a lot of mining. Go away, horse. Oh, I have the carrots. That's why they keep following me. I was wondering, like, why are they onto me? Okay, so I guess it's gonna be a lot of AFKing at the skeleton farm to get this done. But I think it would still be better than going ahead and mining all the blocks that I need. As I was about to go down into the mine, I just realized I actually mined a lot of blocks while I was making the tunnel, so... I have plenty of cobble deep slate to pull off this build. So realistically, I think I don't necessarily need anything right now. I probably need a few bows to craft the dispensers and the dropper that I need. And potentially mine some actual stone because I only have cobblestone. I have plenty of quartz here to craft the repeaters. So we're pretty much set. I don't even have to go to the nether, which is... a uh, really big thing before i go ahead actually and get all the materials i actually will need a lot of stone to craft all the comparators and repeaters so i made a small stone generator here uh it's basically near the skeleton farm so i'm still activating the spawner so i'm getting a few bones in between so it's kind of a, a dual thing so I'm gonna be mining here for a bit just to get all the stone that I need for this. And then I'm gonna start crafting all the materials that I need for this. So now that I got the stone, I actually decided that I'm probably gonna need a lot of chests to make the sorting system for the mob farm. So I think I'm gonna make a bamboo farm. I managed to design one in creative that seems pretty easy to be honest. So I think I'm gonna go ahead with that. And I decided that I'm going to make it like hidden away in the forest. So at the moment, this is where the house is. Then in between these two trees here, I'm going to put the farm. It is going to be a bit taller than the trees, but I might be able to hide a few bigger trees in there and then just kind of mask it. So I'm starting off here with the mud and with the hoppers underneath. If you didn't know, the mud is actually less than a block tall. So any items that you throw in, they're going to get picked up by the hoppers straight away. So you don't have to worry about it. Like if you would use grass, for example, you would have to actually use minecart hoppers to pick up the items. But because of the mud, it's a really handy thing to have. Everything just goes straight into the chest because of the hoppers. The next step is going to be four dispensers facing the bamboo. So the bamboo is going to be here on this mud. Then I'm going to have the five pistons above. So these are going to be the pistons that are going to break off the bamboo when it's growing. Three blocks above the piston. I'm going to have an observer facing this way. Behind the observer will be a target block. 
And then from the target block, I'm going to have to put redstone down that will activate the pistons. And to make sure that the signal strength is long enough, I'm going to add a repeater over here. I will then add the hoppers going into the dispensers that will fit them bone mill. Then the power rails would go over the hoppers. I'm going to place a chest here that I'm going to try to face it this way. It doesn't really matter, but personal preference. This is the chest where all the items will go into. I mean, where all the bone meal will go into. Then I'm going to add the minecart hopper. This is going to continuously go in between and it's going to feed all those four dispensers. Underneath the dispenser, I'm adding a few more target blocks. Then it's going to be a redstone behind them all the way up to here. And then on top of this redstone, it's going to be another target block. Facing away from the target block will be an observer. So basically the face of the observer should be here. And then there will have to be a sticky piston holding this observer like this that will activate the clock. Unfortunately, I don't have a sticky piston right now. I wasn't able to find any slime. So I'm just going to manually put the observer down to activate the clock. So with the farm complete, I tried to kind of hide it in the canopy. And I feel like it kind of works. You don't necessarily see that's not an actual tree in there. It's kind of like a gigantic oak tree, maybe. So it kind of fits. Then down here, it's a, you can pretty much see that it's man-made, but it's okay. And then up through here, I get to my chest. All the bone meal is already in. And then I'm going to attempt a few seconds and see if this is actually going to work. So it's going to be really, really loud. So I'm sorry about that. Oh, right. I do have to put the bamboo in there as well, obviously. So with the bamboo placed, I can try again. Yeah, it definitely seems to be working. Like I said, I have to manually break this at the moment until I manage to get a sticky piston. But I feel like it's kind of working okay. I think actually what I'm going to do here, I'm going to put two scaffolding. So the mobs won't actually attempt to go in here. I think that's going to work nice. So like you saw there, there were a few seconds that I ran the farm and there's already two stacks of bamboo in there. So it's really, really efficient. Of course it uses bone meal, but I have plenty with the skeleton farm, so there's not really any problems with that. And also, the fact that this observer here will detect when this bamboo grows, it's both a passive farm and a bone meal farm, so it's going to work out really nice. So it's just going to produce bamboo passively for me, and then when I really need a lot of them, for example, to make the chests for the storage system, I'm just going to use the bone meal piece and that's going to be it. I will try to AFK for a while now just to see how much it actually produces when it's a passive farm. I'm not expecting to have such high results. It's a fairly small farm. I mainly made it for the bone meal. But at least it's going to be passive while I do other things around the base. So yeah, I will AFK for a while and I will see you right after. So it's been just a bit under an hour and it doesn't look too good it's we got a stack and eh, there we go we got a few more just now so a stack and a half almost so yeah for an hour of waiting it's definitely not too good of a production but considering i built this mostly for the bone meal part of it it should be fairly okay so it's gonna do for now and i'm definitely going to make a bigger one further down the line when I'm gonna need more resources. At the moment we're fairly okay still at the start of the game so there's not too many things needed but further down the line I'm probably gonna have to make some mega farms to to get us going. So I ran the farm with the bone meal part of it. Oh there we go. 
And this is what I got in about three to four minutes. It definitely used a lot of bone meal. I pretty much put a whole double chest in here and it seems like all of it is gone now. Uh, yeah, the Minecraft does... The Minecraft. <laughs> the the minecart doesn't have anything left in it, so it's potentially some left in the hoppers. But uh, yeah, for less than five minutes work to get a full double chest, that's really, really good going. And also, in case you're wondering, out of that whole double chest, I managed to craft six stacks and a bit of block of bamboos. So that should give us plenty of chests after I transfer them into planks. I'm definitely gonna need a lot of hoppers for the mob farm, so it's gonna be really good to have. I was never a huge fan of this uh, boat with a chest, but it's actually so handy to transport items. I know it's only a chest extra, but that saved me an extra trip basically, just purely because I put everything in the chest, so definitely try to use this in case you didn't so far. So the first thing in building this farm is gonna be to place down the chest and the hoppers pointing into it at basically level 63. So it's just one block above the sea level. So it's one, two, three, four, five. And then we have two pointing into the middle ones on each of the sides. Yeah, should look something around these lines here. And this is basically be gonna be the platform where the mobs are gonna fall from and just die here. The next step is gonna be to pillar up to Y93. I use scaffolding, it seems to be the easiest way. And then to build a 5x5 platform here. This is basically going to be the hole for the mobs to fall in through. And it's gonna match the hoppers down below exactly. So it's gonna be enough of a big hole to fit all the spiders and all the mobs that are gonna be dropping down. So there won't be any spiders especially being caught on. From this platform, we would build seven blocks out and then basically build a diamond all around it with all edges being seven blocks. I use the polished deep slate slabs just to make it easier to see on video how the blocks look like. But you can use any type of slabs that you want. So it's going to look something like this. After finishing the platform, you would want to step up one block, then go out three more, and continue making a diamond around this. After finishing the platform, go up one more block, and I recommend using full blocks for this one, purely because of the water longing feature that got added since Nambom built this farm. Like this, you're gonna be allowed to place the water on top of this, rather than if you use a slab, the water would just flow down, so it wouldn't be working as it's supposed to be. Behind this, you'll also need some temporary blocks. These are going to be here just to trick the water to actually fall in rather than falling out. After the water will be placed, like I will show you a bit later on, these blocks will go away and you're gonna have just a clean platform. Once you have this complete and the temporary blocks placed, you can go ahead and place the water on these inside blocks here. This would flow in and then you should place one on every single block because there's not going to be any sources forming. As you can see, the water just flows in. It's going to be a bit of a tedious process, especially in survival. But like I said, the farm is definitely worth it. I've been using it for a very long time. Once you finish placing up the water, you should have something like this. And you can start breaking the temporary blocks that you placed earlier on. But be careful because if you break any of the blocks with the water on it, you will have to redo the whole platform from scratch. The next step will be to place all our dispensers. Add two temporary blocks and then add up your dispenser. Continue adding two temporary blocks in a dispenser until you reach the top and at the top we will finish with a dropper. Once we reach the top, we can jump back down into the water and we would start placing our observers facing up, pillaring again all the way up. 
Once all these are complete, we're gonna go 7 blocks out from the central dispenser. And again we're gonna create our diamond platforms. All these are made with top slabs. So basically all the way up to the top using top slabs creating the, the diamond required for the spawning platforms. It's probably also a good idea to place torches on the platforms just so when you come back down there won't be any mobs spawned to kill you. The top layer will be built out of bottom slabs. We go the usual 7 blocks out from the dropper, like the platforms below. And then we continue with another 14 blocks. And again we are gonna fill out the whole diamond all the way through. This will ensure basically that the light level on every single platform is completely zero, so the mobs will only spawn in this once we build the AFK platform. Now with the roof complete, we're gonna add some top slabs here. Which are gonna be the base for our clock. Here we'll place the lever, the comparator in subtract mode. And then we will place all our repeaters on full delay. With the clock complete, now we can go down and place our water buckets in each of the dispensers. And make sure that on the way down, you actually block each of the holes that you made with your temporary blocks. With the buckets also placed, the next step will be to add signs at the edge of the water so the spiders basically will be able to fall through and all the mobs would slide in since the water goes a bit over the sign. With the signs placed, the farm is now pretty much complete. The only thing left now is to pillar up from this level 127 blocks and then make a glass path all the way up to the middle of the farm. That will be your perfect AFK spot. That will ensure that no mobs will spawn here on the surface since everything is lit up. As you saw from that small footage, this was about a minute being up in the AFK spot and there's already a lot of items in here. So imagine AFKing for a while or just being around the world because the farm will constantly just load. The next step would definitely be to make a, an automatic sorting system for the farm down below. I'm probably gonna have to gather a few more resources. I don't think I have enough to build the whole sorter since it does need a lot of redstone. So for the time being, I'll probably just put a, a few hoppers and some chests just to gather the items in there and then I'm going to work in gathering more materials and then I'm going to make the actual sorting system. Also what I would recommend considering some of the mobs are actually surviving due to feather falling and sometimes they could even pick up some items which means they will never despawn. I'd recommend you put some magma blocks around this and then add the fence around it like that the mobs will be pretty much forced to walk onto the magma blocks if they are too many. Also if you don't have magma blocks you could use like campfires or any type of blocks that could hurt them. So the final product would look something like this. Like I mentioned earlier I added a few temporary chests here just to kind of gather the drops. And I'm going to start working in gathering all the resources and probably in the next episode I'm going to build this storage system. And hopefully I'll be able to also make that sugarcane farm. So we're already getting a good bit of gunpowder. I will just need the paper so the sugarcane farm would be next. And I would say that after that we can almost go and fight the dragon. Like I mentioned last episode, I was working on the storage system for the mob farm and I managed to finish it. I made this entrance here, you kind of go into the water and then you swim down. Uh, you kind of have to swim, go through this, and then you basically pop behind this trap door. All looks seamless, you don't even know there's an entrance there. I know it's just me on the world, but it's just like, adds an extra bit of 
entertainment, I guess, to keep things a bit more funny. So this is the storage, nothing too fancy, just some stone bricks, some uh, spruce wood, then some trapdoors here. Some of them have a, a few things hidden behind, like a crafting table. I have my bed underneath here. Then all these, all the items are here. Then the miscellaneous are on the end. I made it like this so only these items can go in. I know that the arrows are probably gonna overflow. So I don't want to have all of those in this chest here, so. And also, I uh, added some hoppers underneath. And since we're gonna go and kill the dragon, I'm probably gonna go on some end busting, try to get some shulker boxes. So basically on these logs here, there's gonna be shulker boxes placed. So if I need any of these items at any point, I can just grab the shulker box, put a new one in place and go, rather than having to empty out the chests. It's going to be a nice, quick little system. It was pretty easy to add, it's just like a hopper underneath, so it's no big deal. I actually noticed that I need to replace that piece there. I don't like how it looks that you can see the diorite, so I'll have to put some trap doors there just to mask it. But other than that, I'm pretty happy of... Uh, of the story system and I kind of like it how it turned out. Also, uh, maybe let me down in the comments like do you think it would be worth doing the back here? Like at the moment it's only lit up but there's nothing in here. It's like basically you know just the hole that I dug and that's about it. I was thinking to maybe make something out of it but I'm not exactly sure what. And also I have the same kind of entrance for the back here. It's a trap door and then go in swim mode, get in, close behind you and here we are. Like I mentioned previously, since this is episode 9 and I want to kill the dragon in episode 10, I'm gonna have to go to the nether, find the fortress and then get some blaze rods to craft some eyes of ender. And then try to actually find the stronghold to get the portals there sorted. I think the next step would be probably to check what this trader has. Coral, dark oak, kelp. Do I need dark oak? I don't think so. Yeah, I don't need anything. Uh, thank you very much. So yeah, the, the next step is going to be to go to the nether. Try to find that fortress. And I will probably have to link a nether portal to that to be honest just so i don't have to travel so far so it's definitely a good bit of preparation that i need to do this episode if i want to actually kill the dragon on the next one all right so the first proper trip to the nether i know i've been there once more but it was pretty much underground so i won't count that but this time it's gonna be for an actual fortress find so hopefully it's not gonna be too far and I'm going to be able to get some blaze rods fairly quick. I am going to leave my axe and my lucky pick behind. I don't feel like I need those. A stack of arrows should be enough. Then I need to get the golden helmet just in case we encounter anyone that doesn't like us. Nighttime is coming. Let's go. What is this guy doing here? Which way do I want to go is the question. Do I want to bridge? Like I don't have any blocks so that wasn't smart. I'll be right back. Okay, yeah, I'm back with the blocks. Um, I feel like if I go this way I can just like mine through. And there's some quartz there as well, rather than try to go through this forest. So I am going to bridge across. Should be okay, since uh, I have the golden helmet. No one's gonna attack me. Unless there is one of the pigs around here. What's their name again? Hoglins, is it? Oh, I got a mushroom. So I'll keep that on me. And honestly, I'm probably going to take another one as well. Just so I have both of them. I haven't seen this part yet. Like, it looks so nice with the shaders. 
Let's grab some quartz. Okay, so the question is, do I attempt to go up? Or do I just cut through this? I feel like if I'm gonna cut through this, might be a better chance of finding something. I don't feel like getting this gold. Oh, oh my god. Okay, let's replace that. Some more quartz. That is a, a lava lake for sure. So, oh my god. Is that a fortress? It is. Oh, look at the effect. That's so cool. The question is, so I think I'm going to go that way now. See if I can get to the fortress. Um, yeah. Okay, I'm not the fan of this. Maybe I can go in here and go this way. Oh, there's some more quartz. That fortress was fairly close. However, I don't know how close. Oh, there we go. We got here. And... Let's try to go up, not with the quartz. So the fortress is there. Where did I come from? Okay. Okay, I came from here. So I'm gonna put one of these. What am I hearing? Oh, I'm not a big fan of being in this forest like this. I'm gonna put a torch here. Another one there. What was that? Oh, it was a magma cube. I don't like magma cubes. There's a couple of wither skeletons waiting for me already. Okay, so I'm gonna go through this. Okay, I'm getting close. Oh, that's the reflection of the shaders. So the question is... Oh, I'm actually really, really close to it. Okay, so let's see what would be the best way to get there. Probably need to get rid of these skeletons first, right? And then try to kind of pillar. Not pillar, but you know what I mean. Yeah, actually the vines are a really good idea to go down in the nether. But I don't have any bone meal on me, so it's not really going to work. So if I make it here... Watch for more skeletons so I don't get shot off. And can I reach? Not yet. Okay, so let's put down some torches here. I think I'm going to just try to make myself a staircase down. Probably best way to do it. Okay, so I know I can place blocks next to these things. I don't trust myself to go down on them, to be honest. So technically, if I get here... Oh, there we go. That's why we practice. And then I just go all the way up here, right? So... There's blazes there. 
question is is there a blaze spawner somewhere or will i have to like fight with them like this so let's see there's all kind of squeaks that i can hear so that's the bridge i think if i keep going straight oh i found something a terrible fortress Okay, so I got somewhere. Oh, this looks like the the room that has those like stairs and there's like that lava pit above it, I think. These two bridges are kind of weird. Oh, there's like a huge fortress that goes over there as well. Okay, let's try to go down. And see what I can find here. Is there anything that can hurt me? Not yet. But our safety barrier. I'm going to take some nether wart. And then before I go further, do this. Ooh, a rib armor trim. Honestly, I have no idea of these uh, smithing templates uh yeah i'll just break the chest because i forgot well i didn't take my axe so i can hear blazes also might be worth putting these torches down just so i know which way i am to go oh yeah this is the room that i thought that's gonna be but uh, apparently i was wrong there they are kind of similar there's a blaze Okay, so this is a dead end. Then more diamonds. Nice. Some gold. This is another dead end here. I think I'm just going to break the chest. Oh, there's a blaze there. I definitely don't want to get hit by it. Okay, into fire. Got three blaze rods, so... That's a good start. More gold and more diamonds. Okay, so let's go back. And I think the only way that I haven't been yet is go down that staircase. So it's not this way. That's why I put the torches. So I've been that way. And this is why I put the too tall protection. Imagine getting a wither skull straight away now. <laughs> okay, this one I already checked. Yeah, so that's where I came from. So it's going down into the fortress now. Not a hundred percent sure how blazes spawn. I do hear a lot of them. Oh, there we go. But I think that was just a spawn. It wasn't a spawner. So there's definitely blazes spawning. So there is potential for a spawner to be fairly close. Some gold armor. Horse armor. And I am hearing a lot of wither skeletons now. So yeah, I'm not sure if there is a, an actual blaze spawner in this fortress though. I don't know now. Is it a guarantee spawn? I'm not sure it is. I will explore a bit more just to make sure that there's no actual spawner. Because if I can find a spawner then it's, it's easy to get as many as I want. And then who knows, maybe further down the line I'm actually going to make a... A farm for it so there's a blaze out there yeah so i think they only spawn now because it's a fortress so yeah let me explore a bit more and then i'll uh, i'll bring you guys back i did manage to find the blaze spawner and it seems like it was just a cross from where we came in from 
took me a while to get here. Oh, I'm getting attacked now again. Maybe I'll place a few torches here. It's a good thing that I have the good armor or else I don't know if I would make it out from here. So like I was saying, the spawner is here and basically we came through, through there. So it was really, really close. But the way was actually blocked. Ow, ow. I don't want to fight near that guy. I don't want to hit him by mistake. Okay. You can... Uh... Oh, actually, you know what? Let's see if you can get me anything. What did I get? Did you give me anything? Are you just stealing my gold? Or oh, fire charge? What is that? Blackstone? Okay, not bad. I forgot you can actually get blackstone from these guys, so technically it's renewable now. Uh, iron nugget I definitely don't need. Low sand, I'll take it. Some gravel, I don't need it right now. Crying obsidian. Come on, don't run away. Oh, is there a pig up there? Oh, there is. Okay, you guy fight him. Or maybe I will help you out. Okay, let's better get back home. Uh, which way was it? It was this way. Ah, not magma cubes. A good thing that I have the bow. I absolutely hate magma cubes. So let's hope no hoglins spawn. Oh, here we go. Ooh. Ah. Uh -huh. Ow. That hurt. And then which way was home is the question. I believe it was this way, right? But of course I didn't put any kind of torches or anything to let me know where home is. Because why would I? So the question is... Will they get scared if I hold the mushroom? Or do they only get scared... Right, so they only get scared if you place it. Okay, I guess that's how I'm gonna navigate. I think the portal is just over here. So let's see, what do we get? Put this on. So all the nether things are going in this chest. Ooh, got some nice soul sand. So here are the blaze rods. I think now the hard part will be to actually find some Enderman. I feel like that's gonna be a bit tricky. So I got all the horse armors here. I will go and put the diamond one on my little horse. Looks like he actually got in here. Ah, there we go. Need to give him a name. Here we go. First two eyes of Ender. I think I'm going to try to get maybe 10 eyes of Ender. Maybe a few more. I could technically make an Ender chest right now, but is that going to help me though? Because if I go to the end, I'm going to get Ender chests from there. So it wouldn't necessarily be worth it. So I think my best chance to find Enderman would probably be to just wander around these fields at night. Oh, there's one. Don't know how smart that was. In the search for some Enderman, I actually managed to find the Trident guy. And the first one with a Trident actually dropped me a Trident. So that was really, really lucky. 
I haven't really used tridents, but who knows, maybe I'm gonna start to, considering I'm not gonna need any arrows or stuff like that. So I used about half a stack of gold ingots, and I managed to get four enderpearls out of that by bartering. And then you know what I realized? We actually have villagers, so I could use the mob farm, trade some rotten flesh, and get pearls from a cleric since we already have that igloo with the basement where I can grab a brewing stand from. So now the tricky part will be to get this guy and lock him in a house or somewhere and make him be a cleric instead of being a fisherman. So that's gonna be fun. Alright, so I waited for night, I slept here. He actually got by himself in the house, so now I'm just waiting for him to lose profession. He actually managed to grab a lectern from the other house, so now I just need to wait for a bit. Put the brewing stand down and I should have a cleric. He's really staring me down here. He said, no, I want to be a librarian. Don't give me the brewing stand. This is a staring contest now. Okay, let's go. Okay, okay, you win the staring contest, but you're still gonna have to take the job. Oh, aha. So you just wanted me to lose basically, huh? Okay, give me all those emeralds. That's the level that I need, right? Yeah, there's the pearls. How did I forget about this? I, I really should have remembered. I made so many villager uh, videos. I should have remembered that they, they're trading pearls. So I got 16 pearls from the villager. Got five more here, two eyes of ender. So let's craft... Uh, a bit a few more yeah maybe i could just take the blaze rods with me instead of crafting all the eyes of ender right yeah that's probably a bit smarter to do so i'm going to to do like six for now and i guess we can probably start checking where the fortress is or rather the stronghold so let's go into the open water kind of or maybe just shoot one from here. Oh, there we go. Did that just break on me? Are you serious? Yeah, so that's why I said uh, we need to make a few more. Because uh, literally the first tie of Ender that I threw, it just broke. So the direction was kind of that way. I'm gonna go past this bridge and then I'm gonna throw another one just to see where we need to go. I would say that we should be fairly close considering we're kind of far from spawn right now. So the fortress, the stronghold, should be kind of okay distance from here. Okay, don't break. Are you serious? Okay, I guess it's still this way. Will it be an underground stronghold, since we're still on the water? Is that another village? Yeah, because ours is there. Wow, that's so close. Let's see if there's uh, anything to find in there. Because it looks like we need to kind of go this way anyway, so might as well. Uh, I think uh, you guys have a lava issue here. I don't know, I wouldn't go in this house if I were you. So let's see, let's throw one more, let's go up here. So it's still that way. Don't break. Oh, finally. So let's cross over this terrain. Get back onto sea. Ah, but it was kind of this way, right? So it wasn't necessarily on the water anymore. Maybe I'll just go on the water just because it's much faster than jumping over blocks. Then the second it goes really far onto land, then I can just go there. Wait, what? Oh, it's, it went this way. Does that mean that it's somewhere here? Let's see. Oh, it went down. Oh no, it went this way. And it broke again. Are you serious? Let's see. This is... Like, I can't believe that so many of them actually broke on me. Let's throw one more. Don't break. What is this? 
yeah so it looks like the the stronghold is pretty much down here so we're gonna do the two block method here i'm gonna cover myself up and gonna dig straight down i think i'm gonna use my silk touch Probably would have been smart to grab some ladders or something like that, so I can actually go back up, but I guess I can just pillar up, it's no such big deal. Oh, I see something. Is that a spawner? It's a spawner. It's a zombie spawner, actually. Okay, let's uh, let's get in here and maybe block this so no one can uh, come in after me. Well, that was smart. I'm gonna put a torch right on the spawner. Let's see. Uh, nothing interesting and nothing interesting. What a surprise! So let's uh, keep digging. I thought I should have found it by now. Are they going that low into the world? Did I mess it up? Uh, I heard it to the left, and I think it broke. <laughs> what a surprise. Okay, let's go. Let's go to the left here. The thing is, how low or how high do I need to be? Maybe I craft another Eye of Ender and throw it just to see which way it goes. Let's see. was kind of here don't know now should i go in like a diagonal or something did i mess up on the surface when i threw it you know what i'm gonna go from this main tunnel so i came from here right so i'm gonna go into this tunnel here and i'm gonna branch out Aha. Okay, so I don't know why I spy. I don't know why I heard the pearl over that wall. Okay, so now I need to craft a good few more torches just to make sure. I hear some skeletons. Oh, there's a library here. Oh, it's the portal room. Okay, I know it's not good to do this, but I am going to break this spawner. I don't want to die. And it looks like there's two only. So we need 10, is it? 3, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, yeah. Okay. So the first thing to do in this situation will be to cover the lava under the portal. I don't feel like dying in there. Put some torches down. So the good part is that we're actually not that far away from home. So I'm fairly, fairly close. It's going to be interesting to put a nether portal. But I could cheat and maybe make like a roof system. So let's see. I will make a crafting bench. Crafting table. And then... I will make a chest just to put all my things inside. I'll put the bed right here. Then let's explore that library first. See how many creepers we can find in here. There's no noises, no nothing around here. I know that sometimes you can find pretty good loot around here. I don't know if it's always the case. It looks like it's pretty lit up actually, so I don't know if anything will spawn oh there's the chest in the corner right Ooh, an eye armor trim i have no idea how that looks to be honest and piercing four and a compass yeah i don't need those and there was one more chest yeah there it is that's oh my god look at that book 
Depth Strider 3, Sharpness 3, Piercing, Mending, Efficiency. <laughs> what is going on? And then another eye trim. Okay, I think I think that's it, right? It's just the two chests. So there's nothing else in here. Is this the same library? Oh no, that's another one. I didn't know there's multiple ones. So does that mean that there is no chest in this one? Oh no, there is. One more eye armor. A lot more paper. I'll definitely need that. So yeah, I guess because this doesn't have a floor, we only have the one chest in here. Ooh, diamonds. Didn't know you can find diamonds in these chests. Oh, there's like a nice fountain in here. It's another fountain room. I will have to go back to base just to grab a good bit of arrows. I want to make sure that I have all the arrows that I need. And the thing is, I might have to make a ladder. Good thing that I brought the wood to actually get out from here. So I decided in the end to just make a bubble column. It's much, much better. And then this is just a water drop, basically. Nothing too fancy, but it does the job. I'm probably going to make a nether portal at one point, but I have to be a bit more brave to actually get the nether sorted. So maybe we'll just get the wings first. So I dropped everything here that I don't think I'll need for this. Then let's craft all these eyes of ender. I got the sugar cane, some gunpowder, just for when I get the wings so I can fly back a bit easier. I got a lot of arrows, a few chests to craft some shulkers, picks and all that. So I think we are pretty much okay. So let's go. Here we go. There we go. That is so loud, it's just unbelievable. Okay, get all the XP. Okay, so let's see, where did that gateway open? It's over on this side. There we go. Oh. Okay, so, oh, there's an end city right there. Does it have a ship, though? Doesn't look like it. Is there anything else? I think I'm going to increase my render distance for this. Put it on max. Just so I can see everything. So, oh, there is a ship. Okay. Do I risk the pearl throw? I don't know exactly how that looks over there. I think I'm just gonna pillar a bit closer. Okay. Feel a bit more confident now. Not too much, but a bit more. There we go. Okay, so I need to get to the, the ship now. It's gonna be interesting. Oh my god, these drops. Like, look at this. Oh, they changed the pearl sound, right? It's not so loud anymore now. So, I think I'm going to raid the city first. Might as well get some uh, shulkers. 
and then I'm gonna get the wings. Yeah, I think that sounds like a good plan. Get some shulkers, get the wings, then I'm gonna head back home. That was not what I was expecting to be finding this ship. Okay, so I need to make sure I destroy these and not get hit by them. Or if I do get hit, to try to get inside this. Okay, we got the levitate. Let's jump on them. Oh my god. Okay, let's... Uh, I guess I'm just gonna float here for a bit. Okay, I need to get inside straight away. Or else they're just gonna hit me non-stop and I'm not gonna get anything. Okay, first shell. Pretty sure there are some up there. Ow. There are a lot of them in here. And I want to make sure that I actually grab all the shells. 18 shulker shells. So that will give us 9 shulker boxes. So the next piece is gonna be to actually get to the end ship. So the ship, it kind of looks like it's above the void, to be honest. I'm probably going to get hit by the shulkers, but I might be able to just levitate over there. If I do get hit, it is a risk, though, that I'm going to fall into the void. So I'm not sure what's the best approach. Can they see me yet? No. Let's try to kill this one. There we go. Do I attempt to Ender Pearl? Is the question. I really don't trust myself Ender Pearling over the void. So there should be another guy in here. Let's see the loot an ingot, an efficiency for shovel. Of course, it needs to have Curse of Binding. I'll take it anyway. And I will take the chests as well. They're gonna help out. And you guys ready? Sky's the limit. Gonna take the brewing stand as well. Why not? And let's make some rockets. Don't want to make too many so I don't, you know, overflow my inventory right now. I'm just gonna make a couple of them. And I'm gonna have. To get the dragon head, of course. There we go. Let's put this on. Too bad it doesn't move and it only moves powered by redstone. Oh yeah, if you guys didn't know, they actually added a quick swap now for this. So you can just right click in your inventory and it, it puts them on. So you don't have to bother anymore about going into your inventory, clicking here, clicking there, you just like right click and it auto equips it and it swaps it for you. And we're back. So now I can technically build uh, an ender farm soon. So I don't have to worry about uh, XP. So goodbye the end. I'll see you soon. We're going back home. So that was actually much, much faster than I was expecting it to be. The dragon fight was rather easy, so I think I did fairly okay. I thought I'm gonna be worse to be honest. It's been a while since I actually fought the dragon by myself. Now I can actually fly all the way home. Let's see how does the world look like from above. Oh, there's another village over here. That's the village that we've seen before. And then that's our village. Let's fly and see how the path looks like from above. Hope the... yeah, the durability is still okay. Yeah, this looks so nice now. So, so cool. I'll definitely have to do some, something with this island here. Let's sleep quick. Oh, the iron golems are having a party here. And let's see which one. Do I have an unbreaking villager? 
I definitely have a mending one. I think I only have one librarian, right? Yeah, I actually don't have an unbreaking villager, so I'm gonna have to work a bit on that. Get an unbreaking villager. And uh, actually put that on my wings, because mending is nice to have, but the wings would still break fairly quick if I don't have mending on them. So I'm gonna put mending on, so at least it's gonna repair itself. So I actually did a small stream i haven't streamed in a while you can find me both on twitch and on youtube i stream at the same time and we managed to get this end room done at the diagon here it's like all end related and then in here like uh, two fence gates that are basically hidden by these flags flags banners <laughs> what am i even talking about the two end rods in there you can't really see that, you know, it's like the gate kind of blocks them. So that looks pretty nice. I need to remove this chest and the table, to be honest, and probably change the color of the bed to something else that matches a bit more. And yeah, that's it. A few chorus flowers, added the egg there, kind of made a few chains, a slab, and, and that one just to kind of pull attention to it. And once I finished the room, I actually managed to get an unbreaking villager put it on my wings so now I can actually fly properly. Another stream later on Twitch and YouTube, I made myself a redstone box. I got a few materials. I do need to get a few more pistons, I believe, and potentially a bit more redstone. And the plan is to build a sugarcane farm like I mentioned in a previous episode. I decided that I'm probably going to level out this area here. I believe it's going to be summer at this level here. So all this dirt will go away. I'm going to build the farm around here. Maybe I'm going to add a few more farms. And I want to try to terraform a mountain pretty much like that one. Obviously, it's going to be way different. But it's going to be... The idea is that... I want to have like kind of two mountains here. If you really look around, it's all forest and plains. There's no high mountains or anything like that. And it kind of feels like that one is a bit out of place. So by building the farm here, I can create the mountain and I can probably create kind of a farming district underneath the mountain, who knows. While you guys were watching that time lapse of me clearing the grass, I actually remembered that I forgot to put in the book that I killed the dragon. So I added it here now, dragon killed and I got the wings on the 19th of November. So probably by the time you guys see this episode, it's gonna be a good few weeks after that. But yeah, I remembered to add this and I need to remember going forward to add all kind of different things here, like achievements or milestones or just something to keep track and to actually look at back once I get further down into the world. So the farm that I'm going to be building is going to be inspired by Tango's farm. It's a pretty old video at this stage, I believe. I slightly modified it just based on what I remember from the video. I tried not to follow it too much, so it could be slightly modified, but I'll try to put a link to his farm in the description. He's going to be explaining properly how to do things. I'm gonna do my own kind of tutorial if you guys are interested. So let's jump right into it. First of all, you will need your dirt or you can use sand if you want for this. I believe dirt works better if you want to stack up. It's gonna be an eight wide, basically just for the water to flow and push all the items off. Then the top part is gonna be covered by slabs. This is basically going to allow us to place another source on top and the sugar cane on the dirt since there's still water for it. The sugar cane goes in next. And then we will place one water source onto this block here because we can't actually put it directly on the slab. And this will flow all the way down and this is basically what's going to push the items out. 
Oh, I think I forgot one sugar cane here. Yeah, so because it's an 8 wide, the water will just stop here and the items will just flow out. Next up, we will have the pistons on both sides with the block on top of all of them. That's where all the redstone will go on top of. We will then have two observers, one facing into the bottom sugarcane, and then one facing at the one on the bottom. We will then add some redstone all the way across. And basically, whenever that sugarcane attempts to grow, all the pistons would trigger and the sugarcane would get shot off in this, into this water stream. I did the exact same thing on the other side. And now the last finishing touch is to actually add some fence gates. And these would stop the sugarcane to just bounce from one side to the other. So the fence gates would go in a straight line like this. They would remain closed. And this is a basic module for this. I will build one to the side and I'll probably build one onto the top just to kind of show you how exactly it works so you can connect them together. In order to expand the module up, you just add dirt on top of the sugarcane. So basically the third piece of sugarcane, it's actually dirt now. That's where the other sugarcane is going to go. You're going to put water on top of the fence gates to make unlimited sources in order for you to plant the sugarcane. Let's plant that now. We are going to use the same trick. We are going to put slabs on top of the water. And then at the end here, we will again place one water source here that's going to flow out. I added ice here. Just in case you want to expand it over that side, for example, you will have a pressure plate here and then you would just replicate the same module over on this side with a pressure plate on this. So like that, the water will only flow that way. So like I said, I replicated the exact same thing at the top. Fence gates in the middle, pistons, redstone on top of the stone, and then the observer. I actually missed one here by the looks of it. So I'm going to have to replace that just to make sure this works. To extend outwards, it's actually a bit easier. You just have to place all the pistons, same as the previous module there. Then you're going to place your dirt just one, two blocks below, actually. You're going to have to place your water source as well, or else this is not going to work, unfortunately. So this is all dependent on water. The one good thing, however, is that sugarcane doesn't require any light, so you basically don't need to light up the whole place, so just light it up enough for mobs not to spawn into it. So we place this sugarcane here. We then line up the blocks on top of the pistons, and then a redstone line. The good thing about this, you can basically use the same observer for this clock here, so you wouldn't have to use more observers on this farm. This is pretty much your choice. If you put an observer here, this will trigger more often. If you don't, that means that this module will control this one as well. Like you just saw there, sugarcane is already growing. I'm getting a, a few already. It's not a lot since it's really small. So I'm going to have to expand this. I'm going to make probably around 10 modules in total. I'll see how much redstone I actually have. But this should serve me well to have a whole supply of rockets for future episodes. Okay, so the farm is now pretty much complete. I build 8 modules. I need a lot of pistons. And I need to trade a lot more for redstone with the cleric that we have at the village. So I'm probably going to try to farm more and expand this even more. But it's pretty much making a lot of sugarcane already, even with just these modules. So while I was building the rest, I made two, four, five stacks of sugarcane and I had to use some more to basically create the other modules. So it's pretty efficient. I don't know necessarily if it's lossless. But at this point, it doesn't really matter that much. It's going to be good enough for what I'll need in this series. 
basically the second I add maybe even double the whole module that I have right now, it's probably going to last me a really long time. And the idea is that I built it right next to the mob farm. So basically whenever I AFK at the mob farm, this will be running in the background as well. So I'm going to get both the sugarcane and the gunpowder at the same time. So I don't think I'll ever run out of rockets. Even if I'm just around without even AFKing, the mobs are still spawning. See, you just see a creeper there. Should just be falling right about now. Yeah, here we go. So yeah, as long as I'm still building around the area modifying adding buildings this farm will pretty much run and passively give me all the rockets that i need this is how it looks like from behind so basically the bottom observers are looking at the sugarcane the top one looks at the bottom observer and then the redstone triggers the whole line uh, one change that i actually made because i realized if i duplicate the module exactly and I have an observer in this place. Some of the sugarcane that kind of touches the grass block will get stuck into the observer. So it needs to be free space here for all of it to be able to get all the way to the end, right? So what I did, I added repeaters here. So everything is controlled by these observers here. The whole line goes across and then the repeater just extends the signal all the way through the end. So I added this. Pretty much all across the board so it's three repeaters down the bottom and another three up top so basically we have all three lines of observers three lines of repeaters so that's pretty much it i think it's actually a bit better like this as well you use less observers lag wise i'm not 100 percent sure which one is more lag friendly but for me it doesn't really matter since it's a single player also, as you can see, this pretty much triggers every couple of seconds. So it's going to start to be really, really efficient the bigger I make it. So yeah, we pretty much achieved our goals this episode. We killed the dragon. We got the wings. I actually got a spare pair of wings. I think we did this on stream, if I'm not mistaken. I wanted to get a second one just in case I die and I lose it. I don't have to like pillar through the end and all that. I can just fly to get some more. So that's going to help me in the long run. And uh, yeah, we built the sugarcane farm. Going to give us all the rockets that we need. And that's going to be it for this episode. As always, thank you very much for watching. Leave your comments down below. Leave a like. It definitely helps with engagement. If you actually enjoyed the episode, maybe even consider subscribing. And I will see you in the next episode. Bye!